We are ready to go. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, meeting. Uh, we'll do roll call, I believe, which is all taken care of already. And uh, are there are any guests or anything here? None. None? So no need for public comment. Uh, we have the minutes of May 26th. Everyone should have received those in their packet. Do we have a motion to accept those minutes? Or are there any corrections that anyone sees? Motion approved, Tom G. Motion by John. Do we have a second? Tom. Or Tom, I'm sorry. Second, Everly. By that. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. All right. Uh, moving along, the financial statements from uh, May. It's Rob Hess. I'll abstain because I was not present at that meeting. Okay. So noted. We have that, Rob. The financial statements um, for May. Starting on page seven, um, revenues for the month, uh, typical transportation um, coming in, uh, the subdivision fees for Dauphin and Perry subdivision reviews. We had um, Mary Silbero join the Perry County Local Planning Assistance Program. And uh, 44,000 from the, the CAP program, which was for our Perry County, Perry County reimbursement for a no deal drill. Yep. Okay. Right. Conservation district for, for some equipment. Um, under other, there's a 175. We had a PMPEI training course, and those were fees collected for that. So, pretty, pretty normal. Uh, revenues for the month. On the expense side, we come out bottom right hand corner says 26.6. Uh, if you take the uh, consultant pass through monies away from that, we're at about 35, 36% budget. And the expected is at the top right, which is about 42%. So we're a little bit below budget. Um, in terms of the programming, uh, regional support. A little bit over, um, and you'll see um, in terms of the sheet that you're seeing on the screen versus what was sent to you in the packet. We had a couple of typos, one of which was Dauphin County support, and the one on the screen does say the accurate number is 13899. Um, I think the sheet that was sent to you said. 813,000, which I'm pretty sure we didn't spend that much in labor in May. And then similarly down on the special projects where it says 88965, that is labor costs for the CAP program. Um, and in the sheet that was distributed with the agenda packet, uh, the April costs uh, from uh, that CAP program was carried over into that cell and um, it was a larger amount than the total. Um, so it is corrected. None of those um, alterations impacted the total amounts, um, just the way the uh, spreadsheets are set up. So the bottom line of what you received and what you're seeing here is the same. Um, just a little tweaking of the insides. Um, so for the special projects, that is staff um, time that's starting to be charged for that CAP program, that second phase of implementation. Uh, and there was 1675 of uh, that PMPEI uh, class. We have um, fees for instructors. So that's where that came from. So those were the unusual parts of that. Going on to the next page for May expenses, that the expenses that have a large um, box around them in the 
percentage budget spent. Those are noted at the bottom. Um, so I won't go into the details there. You can read through them if you need. Uh, and if you have questions, please ask. The one to note, I think, is the fixed asset purchases. There's a $10,000 expenditure, and that was on traffic counters um, that we had talked about upgrading all of our, our traffic counters so that it's modern and can be used with modern equipment. Um, so that's really the only out of the ordinary expense for the month of May. Is there any questions for May? So should I just, I think go we'll on just move right on to June. So, so June is very similar to May. Uh, we have the revenues for transportation coming in. Uh, the subdivision administration fees came in uh, under other regional. We have $2,000 of that was sponsorship from Gibson Thomas that came in. Um, in terms of the overall expenses, we're at 31.3, including the pass through for consultants. Just considering in house costs, we're at 44% of budget with halfway through the year. So we're still within budget um, in pretty good shape. Uh, for our transportation, we're not con considering the SRTP program and the consultants. Um, we're at 49% of budget there. Uh, so we're right on, on target with our transportation spending. We're still a little bit over in terms of the regional support but we are starting to spend down on the special projects for CAP. There's a lot of stormwater activity going on and the external funds were, it's not available until the last few months. So staff is starting to um, charge time there and that's giving a little uh, less pressure on our regional program for, for that. Um, you'll see the county support program, um, Dauphin and Perry are both pretty well over. Um, the same thing applies to Dauphin County with the, um, the REP program, the Water Resources Enhancement Program. Those funds are, um, are just becoming available. Um, so I'm expecting staff's gonna be spending more, signing more time to those external funds and lessening up on the pressure on the Dauphin County Support Program Fund. So by the end of the year, we shouldn't be over. Um, Perry County, unfortunately, that's kind of the tune of Perry County over the time. Um, without an external source of funding to give to Jason to spend some time on, um, we generally run over um, with Perry County, uh, but we'll keep an eye on that. He's doing a lot of uh, good work on the, the comprehensive plan and outreach. Uh, and that's reflected with uh, the Perry County municipalities joining in the LPA program. Um, so that's it with the first page. On the second page for expenses, uh, again, the over and under 10% of the expected budget is highlighted and noted at the bottom of the page. Uh, the two expenses that really um, jump out is the professional services, the 23,000 for this month. Um, we did get uh, billed for the audit and the actuarial evaluation reports. Usually the audit um, comes in two separate smaller invoices, but this year they just gave us one. So we have a big bill this month. Um, that item shouldn't be over budget um, at the end of the year uh, or right as that is a one one time expense, um, and the other the fixed assets were were over, but um, again we had a one time expense early, um, and and we'll fall in line there too. Okay, great. Uh, so that's really in a nutshell for May and June. Does anybody have any questions? Hearing no questions uh, for the May and June 2022 report, uh, we need a, a motion to accept it uh, for filing an audit. So do we have that motion? Yeah, this is Frank. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Frank. I have a second. Frank Campbell, second. Frank Campbell, second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.
Any nays? Hearing none, motion approved. We're moving right along. The payment of expenses. Uh, we're gonna run through them. If anyone has anything after each one, just let us know. We'll stop and go on, but we'll do one to approve them all at the end. Okay. Um, starting on page 11, uh, item 4483, State Association of Boroughs, the 1675 is for the, the payment of instructors for those training courses. Right below it is JMAR Technologies. That's where we uh, bought the traffic counting equipment. Um, about right under 4493 is Dropbox. Uh, that Obviously, as Dropbox, we started a new website and we needed a, a Dropbox function in order to make all of those forms and, and special features work. Um, and you'll see a little bit further down on May 9th, there another Dropbox, we did get a refund as we had probably paid for a subscription and then um, got refunded the portion um, for the additional. Um, two lines down from that is the 44,000 from D DEP um, or that came in for the Perry County Conservation District. You see the Mary Silbero uh, LPA right below that. On the next page, uh, item 4507 Lower Allen Township, they had a Gettysburg Road corridor study that um, they finally invoiced for, <laughs> got, got their payment. Um, so that's the May um, unusual expenses. Uh, moving on to June, uh, the 45, 14 and 15, the Pitney Bowes is the meter uh, rental and uh, postage. Prentice stat right below that is our annual maintenance fee for our plotter. June 6th, uh, sponsorships, again, Gibson Thomas uh, received. We have item 4530, the Veterans Building, that's our utilities. We're running at about $500 a month for utilities. Right below that is the, the Conrad Siegel, our valuation reports bill. And on the next page, 4540, it's the 2021 audit. And I think that's all in terms of the unusual expenses. Planet is in 629, that's online training for staff. Um, so for May and June, those are the out of the ordinary expenses. Anybody has any questions? And then for July to date, uh, we have the 4553 United States Treasury, that's the, the PCOR tax, the patient-centered outcomes research <laughs> for the American um, Healthcare Act. Um, we pay a tax. And then July 7th, special projects, the 1594, that was invoiced, um, again, I think for Perry County Conservation District, that reimbursement came through fast. Um, and then on the following page, those two payments, the 44,000 and the 1594 to the Perry County Conservation District. And that's what we have in terms of the general ledgers for May, June, and July to date. We need action on those. So we, are there any questions? Or none, do we have a motion to approve uh, payment of the bills? Uh, Kersher makes a motion. By John, we have a second. Dana seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Hearing none, motion approved. The uh, next one was that the health reimbursement. Health, health reimbursement. We did not have any reimbursements for May or June. I think there's one coming up in July. We'll see next month. Um, so that's just for your information. Uh, the Next one is our sweep account. Uh, again, our balance is there, uh, which covers our three to six months expenses if we should have an issue. 
with our revenue sources. Um, so that's also there for information. And then the last page um, is the uh, investment account we opened with the CD that we cashed in at the beginning of the year. This is, I'll put this monthly statement in periodically so you can see where it stands. Um, obviously, the rest of the market, we're, we're right with them in good company. We're, about, we're down about 14% at the end of June, it was up ticking when I checked this morning. So it's up and down, but hopefully long-term it all works out. That's all I have. Any questions on any of those? We need no action on the rest of that. Okay, then moving along. Uh, number six, intergovernmental reviews. I'll try to run through these fairly quickly. Um, I think they're all pretty much self-explanatory in terms of being consistent with the with the plan. So that that first one you see, three hundred and twenty thousand for the Shireman track. That's for phase two of kind of a, a park development uh, pro process that uh, involves the addition of a or improvements to a baseball field and a. a, a a trail at the park. Um, the second one uh, that we have for Brightville Park, that's an, another sim it's similar in nature in that it's improvements to an existing park. This time, uh, the addition of a trail and uh, replacement of some outdated uh, equipment. The third one, Dairy's uh, multimodal. Um, basically uh, involves uh, pedestrian crossing improvements at uh, I think it's three gateway areas within uh, you know in the Hershey area. Um, moving down Conewago Creek project. This is actually the same project that through the cap we put monies towards. So this is that project overall was broken into three phases. This is funding for the third phase of that. We contributed towards the second phase uh, with the cap. So this is moving on to the next steps associated with that stream improvement project. Uh, and the last one we have there, this um, uh, 12 county investment to catalyze uh, agricultural project readiness. The concept behind this, this is an, uh, an association here. You see the foundation for PA watersheds looking to get um, agricultural improvement projects in kind of a sho shovel ready form so that other grant programs can take advantage of that. So for instance, you know, we may be investing in some of these things in the future out of those cap implementation funds, that kind of thing. But that's what this um, is, is develop uh, a, a number of different projects to get them to a sho shovel ready uh, form. So again, it's basically water quality improvements and that type of thing that are gonna end up coming out of that um, when they identify it and get those uh, projects ready to go. So that's my quick summary of those five they're all all the letters are in your packet should have scrolled down through but um thought they were all you know they're all fairly obvious improvements to parks improvements to water quality uh, or streams i thought they were all fairly self-explanatory in terms of consistency with uh, regional and county plan does anyone have any questions on any of those five Plans. Five uh, plans. Hearing nothing. Hearing. Uh, do we have a motion to approve them? So move, Tom G. By Tom, do I have a second? Second, Baker. Already, all in favor, say aye. 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 Nays. Hearing none. Motion approved. All right, it takes us down to communications. All right, well, the, the first item that I, I just scrolled down to for communications relates, as you'll see, directly to that last project I just described for you. Um, and basically, it came to our attention that some of the cap money, you see here, $120,000, um, that's being 
that's being used to help identify best management practices um, through remote sensing and, and field work. So we received those funds as part of the cap. We found out that those funds are eligible as a match against this 12 county investment. So this is simply us identifying or letting DEP know that we're willing to basically say that those funds are an in-kind contribution um, towards that other project and that they're related. So um, it's just making them aware that not only do we support the project as being consistent, but we're we're using some of the funding that we've been awarded otherwise to help make that you know go a little further. So that's and that'll help us in the future. You're saying absolutely, too. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's that one. And then you'll see. Speaking of the cap, um, if you remember, that's actually uh, we did that for Dolphin, Perry, Juniata, and Mifflin counties. So these letters that you'll see here are us notifying each of those other partner counties of the overall amount of grant that we received and the amount of the funding that's coming to them, right? So in this particular one, the, the first one that we have here, um, you'll, you'll basically see that the, for Juniata County, their, their projects in this first year weren't ready to go. So they gave up their portion of this first grant amount. So this is basically saying, you know, nothing's coming directly to them this year. But then if you scroll down here, um, uh, here's uh, 505,000 of our, of our grants going to Mifflin County to the Conservation District for various projects. And last but not least, we've talked about some of the money that's already going back to, to Perry County. Their uh, piece of the pie um, was $390,000. And for what it's worth, the part that came to uh, Dolphin County is roughly speaking 600,000. Uh, so anyway, these were letters to make sure that they had that documentation. We've already gone through a process of, you know, uh, signing an MOU, you might remember, um, with each of these entities so that when these bills go to DEP and we get the funds, we're able to transfer those, pay those bills. That's how we've been able to pay Perry County because they signed off on the same MOU that you guys authorized, I think at our last meeting, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So that's what those um, letters are about. And last but not least, this is our uh, notification that the single audit that was filed has been formally accepted by the Federal Audit Clearinghouse. You probably remember that there were no findings on that uh, audit. So we thought we would share the fact that process is basically complete at this point. That's the communications, unless anyone has any questions on any of it. Hearing nothing on uh, that end of it, let's move along to uh, the staff progress report. Okay, I have a a number of things highlighted for this. Uh, I'll just leave it here for now, but I'll I'll go through my highlights and we can scroll down if anybody has any questions. Um, tomorrow is actually the due date. Uh, hats set aside um, roughly, basically $3 million a year as part of what we call the Regional Transportation Plan Implementation Grants. Um, we opened the cycle this year uh, the applications are due tomorrow, um, so we're looking forward to finding out uh, tomorrow. You know, we have we're, we're probably going to allocate two years worth, or six, roughly speaking, six million dollars. We'll know tomorrow what we get in terms of applications and what it what the applications really add up to. So I don't know yet how competitive it's going to be. Have we seen? any so far of this we know waiting. no everybody always waits to the last, last minute okay. i've yeah. gotten several phone calls okay. today asking me questions uh, okay. about the applications um i expect that it's going to come in above that six million but not dramatically above so we're hoping to be able to uh, make the awards the one thing we did with the program this year 
Last year, we had no bottom limit in terms of what you could ask for, and we actually got a number of applications in the ballpark of 40, 50,000 small applications. This year, if you're in a construction project, we set a bottom line of 100,000, basically because it's federal money and there's, there's a lot of bureaucracy that goes with it. So small projects, correct. Um, so last time, in the first round, we had 14 grant recipients. This time I expect fewer recipients because there'll be larger projects in, to a certain degree. So, um, but we'll keep you abreast. Uh, the, the process there is we have a work group that will go through those in August and HATS meets twice in September to make the award. So we'll, we'll let you know as that unfolds. Um, but speak while I'm on the transportation topic, uh, here in June, HATS did adopt their uh, 2023 TIP, which is the four-year program. Um, and the highlight of that was uh, traditionally that's roughly a $70 million a year program that's approved through ATS with the infrastructure bill, it's a hundred million uh, a year now. So a um, lot of more, a lot of new projects, a lot of new bridges, a lot of new things coming out uh, through the tip. And that, if you're interested in any details on that, that's all highlighted on our website. Um, Still on uh, transportation, uh, we've mentioned before, I think this bike share program that we're bringing back uh, to the region, we're pushing hard to uh, get through the bureaucracy associated with federal funds for that. Uh, Mr. Kroppensberger will appreciate that we're in the midst of a CE um, for putting uh, bike racks on sidewalks. Um, <laughs> Anyway, um, we are hoping actually to get through that process and to be able to have bikes that we will display uh, at Capona um, this year, since there will be so many people at Capona. Um, They're going to cost more for on. this. Steve, oh. is it going to cost more for the CE than it is the uh, bike racks? In the uh, very possibly. Uh, <laughs> to, um, well, I'm trying not to think about that. <laughs> We actually got a hit, you'll appreciate this. The game commission said they were concerned about potential impacts on the Peregrine Falcon. Jeez. I'm just pointing that out. Nesting on the sidewalk. Yeah, <laughs> I won't tell you what my response to that was. Uh, <laughs> but we got through it, I'll just say that. A um, Couple other you know, transportation thing, Diane already mentioned that we got these new counters four of which are these camera counters that we've been very actively using for bike bed counts as well as traffic counts. So that, that gave us a capability that we had not had historically because we did not have camera counters. So that's, uh, that's proven helpful. Um, and the other thing transportation wise that uh, happened here in June was that HATS also adopted the I-81 improvement strategy, um, which was this look that we, we coordinated with Franklin County and Lebanon County and did a very thorough evaluation of the 81 corridor, the whole way from the Mason-Dixon line up past the, the 78 split. And you'll soon see it's, it's uh, identified on our website, um, but we've already started implementing uh, a handful of measures. And we just, we just wrote a newsletter uh, article that highlights the accomplishments of having gone through this process already. So I, I think that was a very effective and uh, interesting project. Uh, moving out of uh, transportation, Diane's a couple of times mentioned the countywide action plan. Um, and not only uh, you saw some of the reimbursements we've made to Perry County, but we've started getting some bills for that Conewago Creek project, the Dauphin County's allocation is going towards. So that work is underway. You'll soon see those uh, expenses showing up in the process. And the other thing um, from that general perspective is we continue to work with Fred and others on uh, getting what, what's known, it's the, you know, you might refer to it as the regional stormwater program, but it's known as uh, water Resource Enhancement Program, or REP. Um, that's in the works. We have uh, the eligible municipalities verbally signing off. Fred's been helping us get a, 
uh, an agreement in place that we can sign with these municipalities to allow this transfer of funding and the program to start. So I think we're, Fred, I think finally close to the, the tail end of that agreement being finalized. So um, we'll be doing outreach to even more municipalities in the upcoming month to get them involved in that program. But I think that's going to be uh, an excellent program, personally. Um, Diane mentioned uh, Picture Perry, which is the uh, Perry County comprehensive plan that uh, Jason Finnerty has been working so hard on. Um, the goal is, I think he, his goal is to have that complete by the end of the year, but he's make, been making a lot of progress on that lately. And speaking of Perry County, um, we were actually approached by Penn State uh maybe two months back uh, there was a national science foundation grant application that was available and penn state reached out to us about the possibility of doing some uh, local studies uh tied to the uh ch particular challenges for providing transportation alternatives in rural and urban communities so a lot of this work research will um be most directly uh, applicable to, let's say, Perry County, Upper Dolphin County, and the more rural um, portions of both. But um, they uh, they made this application a couple months ago, and we just found out just a few days ago that um, they were asked for some additional information on that grant. So they're optimistic that uh, they might uh, receive that grant, and in which case we'll be working with Penn State uh, over the next number of months to help them shape that um, program. And uh, I think the only other thing that I'll highlight is a small item towards the end of the progress report. We're also, we're also involved with, uh, in this case, specifically Dolphin County, who formed um, an, what they're calling an infrastructure task force as a result of this federal infrastructure bill, um, where we're one member of a group that's helping compile infrastructure needs from across the county and trying to match those uh, needs to the extent possible to these different infrastructure funding programs that are available now. Uh, going to be a part of this process, I've learned that there's apparently 88 infrastructure programs in place as part of that bill. So this is taking you know hundreds probably of infrastructure needs and trying to match them to 88 different programs so uh, just letting you know that we're a part of that process um, and even though it's specific to uh, Dauphin County certainly if we're at, we're through this able to identify a program that you know uh, Perry County might be interested in or might be applicable we'll try to make this information you know available on a more regional scale but it is a an interesting process to be involved in. Uh, Who runs that program? Who's in charge of that? The task force? Yeah. It's, uh, we're working, you know, at the request of the Dolphin County Chief Clerk. So the commissioners asked for this. He set it up, invited us, you know, to a large degree because of both our transportation expertise and I mentioned the regional stormwater and the gap. So we're involved in a lot of this infrastructure stuff anyway. So they, uh, ask us to be a member of that task force. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, that's my overview of the last couple of months of progress report, unless anybody has any questions. Any questions from anyone? Hearing none, Steve, the only other thing you have there is the annual luncheon. Yes, so uh, again, just a, a reminder on this. So the annual luncheon is scheduled for October the 5th. It'll be over at the Penn Harris or what, I think it's called the Penn Harris again, uh, you know, the name or whatever. Um, anyway, and uh, if, if you uh, remember the, the way that the program will go this year is we're actually having a number of our staff each provide updates on some of the interesting initiatives we've had this year. So I'll probably talk for a minute or two on that 81 uh, improvement strategy. Uh, Jerry Duke here from the office will talk about the regional stormwater uh, issues. Um, ben Warner will talk about the planning toolkit that we completed uh, earlier this year. 
Andrew Bomberger will talk about things like the tip and bike share um, that are underway. Um, and Jason will speak to Picture Perry. And then those little brief summaries of, of major tri-county initiatives will be followed by the relatively new head of the Harrisburg Chamber uh, speaking to the economy of the region and trends and where he sees that going um, in the near term. So that's the that's the program, October 5th. We don't have signups and stuff set up yet on the website, but we will and we'll, we'll make you sure that you're aware when you can actually register to, to join us at the luncheon. Sounds like a, Diane got off the hook on that one. I know. Yeah, no comment. <laughs> the way it's meant to be. She's, she's connected. <laughs> All righty. Um, moving along, uh, I know there's uh, some other, any other business that we have? Yes. Steve, is that going to be you? I will start and then uh, Diane, Diane can have her turn. Okay. Uh, the first item I just want to bring to everybody's attention is um, for, for almost the last two years, um, we've been dealing um, with an issue in Perry County that involves a um, small subdivision um, where the developer ended up building a driveway that goes onto a state route, did not secure an HOP. And the, the steepness of this driveway um, and the compactness, I guess, led to uh, a significant amount of water runoff, which put some gravel and, and materials onto the road, but also uh, affected the property owner across the road. That property owner has been very vocal, I guess I'll say about his uh, uh, dislike for how this is all unfolded and has issued a number of right to know requests and things over the past uh, two years. Most recently, um, he had, through one of those right to know requests, he had asked for information on our liability insurance, um, which we provided in accordance with right to know. He since took that information and filed a claim uh, against Tri County for water damage on his property. Um, so we are, Diane and I have been communicating with the insurance company where we're addressing that. And I, I think we're, we have some confidence that that's not going to go anywhere, um, but um, I wanted to make sure everybody's aware uh, that this has occurred. And it is, to me, it, there's some possibility if these kinds of things continue uh, that we may look at um, potential of working with our solicitor on a harassment uh, kind of a situation. I, I don't know if we'll get to there, but just wanted to make you aware that this has been occurring, that we had this claim filed. We're trying to work it out, um, but it's been a challenge over the last two years. So just to make sure everyone's aware. Uh, the other thing, um, speaking, speaking of liability uh, insurance, you, you heard me mention the bike share program and the, the vendor for that, for which we will be signing a lease um, does ask anybody who joins the bike share program to sign a waiver and they cover uh, their, uh, you know, any potential claims through their liability insurance for which we have asked to be named as a so also insured uh, on their policy. Anyway, we've been working with our solicitor. We've had him review the agreement. Um, he offered some comments to help protect uh, Tri-County uh, in the event. One of the things he mentioned that we're actually looking into, um, he questioned the amount of our liability coverage, um, which is the typical 1 million, 2 million kind of coverage. He suggested that that would be something that we might want to consider increasing um, just because the expense of things in a million dollars isn't what a million dollars used to be kind of thing. So with all this interaction with the insurance company, we are going to at least ask for recommendations and what uh, you know what fee uh, differences that might be so we might find ourselves in a situation of increasing our liability coverage you know that has a relationship to bike share but generally speaking more broadly better protect ourselves so 
those are my two additional things. And then I'll turn it over to Diane for this COLA discussion. Um, so I thought I'd put this in front of the board for consideration given the inflation that we're experiencing at the moment. Um, from time to time, we've had requests from our pensioners to, to consider a COLA. So I put together some kind of background information just to give you a context for what this request might entail. Um, so we try to revisit the issue every three years. I don't know if that's just an operational policy or something that's written down that I haven't found yet, but um, we've um, issued uh, COLAs four different times. Um, the last one was in 2006. Um, the, the amounts vary obviously with the, the inflation rates and they don't necessarily, the amount of the COLA doesn't necessarily um, go coincide directly with the amount of inflation either. So it's kind of a discretionary thing that the board can, can decide on whether or not to um, authorize a, a COLA and, and just how much would be appropriate. Um, if you could scroll down. So right now we have, um, well, actually five retirees were participating in the pensions at the time of the previous COLAs. Uh, and we have one retiree that's still participating in our program since the last COLA in 2006. Um, currently there's nine retirees. Um, four are under the current pension benefit structure. Um, if you recall, we restructured back in 2013 when we uh, started our defined contribution program and, and kind of ended um, the additional um, expansion of the defined benefit program. So there's the more recent retirees are under the new program structure, five of the retirees are under the previous benefit structure, um, four of which have 20 or more years of service. Uh, so just to give a, an idea of the kinds of inflation rates we're looking at, since the last COLA in 2006, it's been a 46% over the last 10 years or since the last re restatement of the pension, it's been 29% over the last five years, 21%. Um, the first half of this year, it's been around 8%. And just in terms of social security, um, from time to time, but not always, um, issues a COLA, and that has been 22% since um, 2012, over the last 10 years since our last restatement. Um, and if you recall, last year, uh, we had Conrad Siegel run some numbers just to see in terms of what the liability and cost to the commission would be if there were a COLA. Um, and those numbers were with all the right retirees included in the COLA, um, that with a 10% COLA, there would be a 220,000 increase in plan liability resulting in a 30,000 increase in our recommended employer contribution over the year. So um, those are just kind of some background information for you. Um, I wanted to see if the board would even consider uh, a COLA at this point for the pensioners before um, even requesting some number crunching from Ashley at Conrad Siegel. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at now before I even approach that subject. Um, if you would um, entertain that notion, um, some idea of maybe amounts that might um, be digestible um, and uh, we could kind of firm this up in September at our meeting if, if, if that would be okay to decide whether or not a, a COLA based on whatever I might find from Ashley. Um, but it's really up to the board whether or not a COLA uh, would be appropriate and how much in the timing and who would participate. So, any <clears throat> input? Hey, go ahead, Frank. D Diane, and so I think many of you know that I work for Tri County. And now, am I? I just want to make sure I don't vote on something that I shouldn't be voting on. So, 
is this part of the retirement program that I'm part of? I may not sure. be getting the COLA, but I don't want to vote on it if I'm in the defined benefits. You are in this defined benefits program um, with the COLA. I'm imagining that we might couch it in terms of the members that are retired retired now and collecting benefits currently um, that might be impacted by this COLA, not necessarily the, the vested former employees that you would be a group of. But yes, this is the program that you are part of. Okay, so I'm just I'm just gonna abstain from any any vote on this. Okay. Does anyone else have any thoughts on uh, moving forward this or approaching Conrad Siegel and Ashley to uh, find out what exactly the cost is or their recommendation? What have they've done to other current plans that they're managing? Does anyone have any comments on that? Hi, this is Dana. Uh, my only question would be is if um, inflation keeps going up in the second half of the year, um, you know, is, is it something that can be revisited then or once it's done, it's done? Oh, it's never once it's done, it's done. I mean, it can always be revisited, you know, I mean, Typically, it's been like a three-year revisit. I think we did visit last year. I just brought it up because of the amount of inflation we're experiencing now. So I think it's based really on the board's feeling of what might be appropriate um, in terms of the kinds of inflation and what cost it would be long-term, not just uh, an ad hoc increase, but long-term over the, the life of the pension um, would be to the commission and what we might be able to afford. So it can't answer to your question is we could revisit it at any time as the board sees appropriate. So Diane, we looked at it last year, but no action was taken, correct? Correct. Okay. It was determined at that time that no COLA would be given. Okay. This is Jim Turner. Go ahead, Jim. It, it, it seems to me that the last couple of times that we have discussed this, we talked with the counties and I don't think either of the counties were doing any kind of COLAs on their pension plans. And that was in part what um, drove the decision to not institute COLAs uh, on our plan. Now, I don't know whether the county philosophy is still the same, but Seems we can check with the yeah that, that's no. why i suggested maybe we check with ashley to see if uh you know and if have they been approached with you know they, i mean they do thousands of pension plans or you know retirement plans in across the state uh in the whole country i mean similar types of clients yes for similar county, types county, of people yes yeah, for for local type government plan uh employees um I thought maybe we should at least ask to see if anyone is doing anything and what those numbers are. And we can check specifically with Dauphin and Perry County, if that's an easy ask. I, I think we should. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, I guess we uh, we need a, do we need a motion for that to uh, to investigate that or is that just something? I mean, the way I'm understood, the way I'm hearing these comments is, sure, go ahead and do a little research to see what, what others are doing and what might be appropriate and come back to you in September with what we've learned. And if we're able to take an action at that point, we take an action if we wanna go further looking into this or whatever, we could do that as well. There's no time frame, right? So right. Good with this. Yeah. Does anyone have a problem with doing that? No, I think that's a fair summary. I don't know that we need a formal motion. OK, all righty. All right, then I'll right. direct Diane to contact Ashley.
at Conrad Siegel and uh, move forward to finding out what is going on, you know, with the inflation rate and, you know, are there any other local type, you know, businesses like ours here doing anything like that? All righty. Thank you. Does anyone have anything else? Hearing nothing, I guess uh, we're in, uh, there's no public comments. So do we have a motion for adjournment? So moved. By Gary Lanker. Second. second. Who was the second? Rob Hess. Rob, okay, thank you, Rob. Okay, now next meeting, September 22nd. We'll uh, see you then or see you on video. Thank you. Thank you very much. To you Thanks, guys. everybody. Thanks, Bob. Yep. Thank you.